This example asks us to calculate the Fourier transform of a pulse of light. The function is defined in the green box in the question. We can see that it's a cosine term, so it oscillates, but instead of extending between minus and plus infinity, it only extends between minus tor and plus tor. So if we were to draw the function, it would look something like this. It's a cosine function which cuts off at some point. So minus tor to plus tor, and then it cuts off to zero like that. And obviously tor controls the width of the function. So we can calculate the Fourier transform. We're given the equation for the Fourier transform in the top right. We've got f of omega, is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi. Now in the integral we can account for the function cutting off by putting the limits minus tor plus tor and then we have a cos omega naught t and then we have our complex exponential e to the minus i omega t dt like that. So we've got to integrate the product of a cosine and an exponential and one easy way of doing this is to use the fact that we can write the cosine as a sum of two complex exponentials. So we can write that we can bring out the a, a divided by 2 pi, the integral between minus tor plus tor, and then the cosine term, we can write that as e to the plus i omega naught t plus e to the minus i omega naught t divided by 2 and then the complex exponential from the Fourier transform part, e to the minus i omega t. We can now multiply out the brackets. We can bring the 2 outside. We can write that as a, 2, square root of 2 pi. Then again, it's the integral between minus tor plus tor. The first term is the product of e to the plus i omega naught t times e to the minus i omega naught t. We can write that as e to the plus i omega naught minus omega t. And then the second term we can write plus e to the minus i omega naught plus omega t like that. Where we're making use of the fact that the product of two exponentials is just a single exponential with an argument equal to the sums of the original two exponentials. So now we've got the integral in a form that's easy to integrate. We've just got to integrate two complex exponentials. So we can write this as a, 2, the square root of 2 pi. And then the first complex exponential, that integrates up to plus i omega naught minus omega t. And we bring out a factor of plus i omega naught minus omega, which goes into the denominator. And then the second term integrates up to e to the minus i omega naught plus omega t and in the denominator we bring out a factor of minus i omega naught plus omega like that and again the limits are minus tor and plus tor. When we put in the limits we're going to get four terms so we get a divided by the square root of 2 pi there's also the factor of 2 there and then we get e the upper limit for the first term gives me plus i omega naught minus omega tor. The lower limit, so minus e to the minus i omega naught minus omega tor. And then that's all over i omega naught minus omega. And then the second term gives me, the first term gives me, um, it's a plus tor, so I get minus i omega naught plus omega tor. And minus e, the minus tor for the lower limit gives me a plus i omega naught plus omega tor. And again, both those terms are divided by i omega naught plus omega, like that. So that's evaluated the Fourier transform. However, we can simplify the result. The first thing we notice is that both the terms in the brackets are looking like sine terms. Remember that sine x is equal to e to the plus ix minus e to the minus ix, all divided by 2i. So we need to bring the 2, we'll rub the 2 out there, and bring the 2 inside the brackets there. And we can now write this as a 
divided by the square root of 2 pi. We can see that the first term is sine omega naught minus omega tau, and there's a factor omega naught minus omega in the denominator. The second term, we can see that we've got e to the minus argument minus e to the plus argument. So they're the wrong way around, but we can use the minus sign in the denominator to reverse those. So we can write the second term as sine omega naught plus omega tau, and then we divide through by omega naught plus omega like that. And that's our final result for the Fourier transform. The only thing we'll probably do is we'll put a tor there and a tor there and balance it with a factor of tor there so that we've got two sync functions. Now if we look at the two sync functions, if we first of all look at the sync function on the right hand side, we can see that if we look at the denominator that the denominator consists of omega naught plus omega all multiplied by tor. Now generally when we're dealing with light, omega naught is very, very big, typically 10 to the 14. And so omega naught tor is typically always greater than 1, much greater than 1. So what we can see is that the denominator of the term in green is always very large. There are no values of omega where that term is small. So the term on the right is always a very, very small term because we're always dividing through by a very large value. The term on the left-hand side, however, although the denominator is normally quite large, in the region where omega naught is approximately equal to omega, that term in the denominator becomes small, and so the term in red becomes large. So if the two terms in the above equation, the term in green is always very small, the term in red is generally small, except in the region omega naught close to omega. So to a very good approximation, we can write that f of omega is a tor divided by the square root of 2 pi, and then sine omega naught minus omega tor divided by omega naught minus omega tor like that. So what we see is we've got a sync function which is centered around omega zero. So if we want to sketch this function, it will look something like this. This is omega, this is f of omega, and we'll sketch in omega naught. And so this will be a sync function that will look something like this. Okay, so like the sync functions we've met already, except now it's um, centered at omega naught. We can think about what the width of this function is. We know that the sync function first becomes zero when the argument is equal to plus or minus pi. So we would have omega naught minus omega multiplied by tor is equal to plus or minus pi. So omega naught minus omega is plus or minus pi over tor. And so omega is equal to omega naught plus or minus pi by tor. And so the width of the function, we would take that as the difference between the two solutions of this equation. Delta omega is equal to 2 pi. Sorry, that's a should be a factor tor there is equal to 2 pi over tor. So we can see that the width of the Fourier transform, if we define that as being between the first two zeros, is given by 2 pi over tor. And tor is the width of the original function, so as we found already, the width of the Fourier transform is inversely proportional to the width of the original function. If tor tends to infinity, so if we go to the case where we have a, an infinitely long Pulse, then what we would find is the width of the Fourier transform would get smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually we would be left with a spike at omega naught. So a pulse that has infinite duration would just have a single frequency present omega naught. As the length of the pulse gets shorter and shorter then the width of the Fourier transform gets bigger and bigger and bigger there are more and more frequency components present.